Hello everybody. I hope you're all hunkered down and staying warm in the middle of all this cold weather. Uh, if, you, if you've been able to be around some snow and play in the ice, then great for you. I'm at the age now where I'm a cold matrix, so I just like being inside with some, something warm like coffee or hot chocolate to drink and a good book and my heater. So that's good. I hope that uh, you all have had a great week. Uh, I'm going to talk about something uh, that, that we experienced this week and kind of tie it in. But first of all, we're going to kind of do some reviewing in our, in our Bible, um, in the books of the Bible. Today, we're going to be talking, I'm going to share a couple of verses in the New Testament, but we're going to be kind of concentrating on, on the Old Testament and it's the next books after the books of the law. You know, we've talked about Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy as being the books of the law. And then the next books are books of history. And those are Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, 1 Kings, 2 Kings, 1 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles, Ezra, and Nehemiah. Those books tell a lot of history about God's people. And there are a lot of things in there, a lot of, I hate to use the word stories, but it's things that happen to people that we can use and learn. And of course, they're, you know, they're there because of what 2 Timothy chapter 3 says. God put them there to teach us or to show us something or to, to help us to live better. Um, a lot of those stories, or some of those stories, I was looking in my Bible last night, like in 1 Samuel and 2 Samuel and 1 Kings and 2 Kings, and in 1 Chronicles and 2 Chronicles, so many of those six books kind of overlap. It's not like 1 Samuel happens, everything happens in it, and then boom, here comes 2 Samuel. It's called kind of meshed together. It's almost like telling the story or telling what happened from a different point of view. It's kind of interesting. Uh, it's almost like going to uh, a wedding or something, and, and I might go to that wedding and I might see, you know, the pretty flowers and tell you all about the flowers, uh, where my sons might go and just go on about how great the food was. or then someone else may tell you how pretty the music was. It's just it's people are seeing things or showing you things from a different point of view. So that's kind of what those books are about. And we're going to kind of talk about something that happens during that time. And we're going to tie it in with a moment in American history as well. You know, I know you all know, even before the weather got bad, that you were going to be out of school on Monday. And if your parents work for the government or if they work at the post office or at the banks or something like that, they were probably off too. And do you know why? Um, the third Monday in February has been declared to be a holiday all over the country. It's called President's Day. Now, the reason why that holiday is, is where it is is because originally, and when I say originally, I mean when I was a child, we learned about February 22nd as being the birthday of President George Washington. We're going to talk about him in a minute. And then later on, I learned that February 12th is actually President Abraham Lincoln's birthday. I hope I got those dates right. Check me if I'm wrong and correct me. <clears throat> but but those, so, so um, at one point, I can remember, now we weren't out of school on those days, like the banks would close on February 12th for President Lincoln's birthday and then turn around again and close on um, February 22nd for President Washington's birthday. And so at some point, it was decided to, to find a middle time and make just President's Day and be one holiday. Now, I chose those two presidents because they're probably the most of the presidents besides our today's presidents that we know that we probably talk more about. Of course, you know, I'm sure if you haven't learned yet, you will. 
President George Washington was our very first president. Uh, I meant to bring a dollar bill. They're kind of hard to come by at my house, but if you look at a dollar bill, President Washington is on the face of the dollar bill. And I had printed out some facts about President Washington. Um, and I've, I've got two or three different things here. Okay, it's okay. Um, president Washington was the first president, and he added the prayer, so help me God, to whenever he took office. So that's, and then it's this piece of paper, which comes from um, an article I printed out, said that when he took the oath of office, he stopped and he kissed his Bible that he put his hand on to take the oath. And then when he uh, spoke to Congress that day, he acknowledged how important it was for God's role in the way the country was founded. He said, no people can acknowledge and, endure, and, in, and adore the invisible hand which conducts our affairs more than the people of the United States. And then he says, every step has been distinguished by some providence. And then he goes on and talks about how we need to uh, share that with other people and we need to live under godly principles. <clears throat> and one of the things that he, early things he did during his presidency was he uh, declared Thanksgiving Day. And when he did that, he said, it is the duty of all nations to remember God and to obey Him and to be thankful for his protection and his favor on us. Okay? That, and so, and I don't know if you've ever heard the old legend about President Washington. And I'll throw this in here. Uh, I don't know if you've ever heard about, there's an old story that says that when he was a child, that he cut down a cherry tree. And when his father asked him, you know, who cut down the cherry tree, he said, I cannot tell a lie. I did cut down the cherry tree. And, and that's, that's kind of um, a good way to, to know about President Washington's integrity, about, about how important it was to be honest and tell the truth. Don't you think that's a great quality to have in a president? Um, I do. <clears throat> and then, of course, now we're going on about President Lincoln. And I don't know if you know much about President Lincoln, other than he was tall and he had this big black hat and um, but he was the president at probably one of the most the hardest times of our history and um, he was struggling in the middle of big president to try to unite a country that seemed just completely uninterested in being united anymore and so in the middle of that he tried to lead our country. And um, he, one of the things he, it was that we were in the middle of a brutal, brutal war against each other. And um, he's famous for a, a speech he gave at a battleground where many, many, many people died. Um, but one of his nicknames, if you, and he's also, he's on the $5 bill. If you ever can get a hold of the $5 bill, there he is. But one of his nicknames was Honest Abe. Um, and, and again, we talked about President Washington being truthful and President Lincoln being honest. Truth and honesty, two pretty good qualities in a president, I would say. And so that one of the things, other things he did, <clears throat> President Lincoln is said it was our duty to recognize that we are dependent on God. And then he talked about the Bible. He said, all the good from the Savior of the world is communicated through the Bible. Without it, we could not know right from wrong. And everything desirable for man or in it. So uh, that's just a little bit of background about President's Day and why we celebrate President's Day. I want to share with you a verse before I go into... Our, our Bible story, because it doesn't seem like I have said anything on the Bible has. Okay, Psalms 33, and Psalms is in the middle of the Bible. We're going to talk about Psalms at some point in the future, but I'm going to read Psalms 33 and verse 12, and I think this is a good 
good verse to remember here as we're talking about presidents and our government and things like that. Psalms 33, 12 says, happy is the nation, and that's another word for country, like United States. Happy is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he has chosen to be his own possession. So what that, that writer is saying is that when we choose to make God our God, the Lord of our lives and the Lord of our country, we will be blessed. We will be recognized as people who follow God. <clears throat> and, and I think for, for us to, to ask for our country to do that, we each need to do that in our own lives. You know, it's, it's easy for us to say, oh, this whole country needs to get back to God. But the truth is, I need to get back to God. You need to get back to God. Everybody themselves, and then once we do that, then we can unite in, in going back to God as a nation together. Okay, that's enough of that for, that for now, but that's just something to think about. But before I go on, and I'm not going to take too much time, but back in when Israel had left Egypt and they were going to the land that God had promised them, they were different from every other country that was around them because they served God. All these other countries had different kinds of things they worshipped, but not God. But they started looking at these other countries and decided, we want a king like they do. They have a king. And then God just like was saying, I'm your king. You don't need a, a, a human king. I'm the king. But they still insisted. So God gave them King Saul. King Saul was, for a while, was a really, really good king, and God gave him specific rules, and he, he submitted, to, and he was obedient to God. And then one day, he decided to take some matters in his own hands and not do what God told him to do and did something different. And, and God wanted to make sure that his people were led by someone who was going to obey him. So he, he, he basically said, Saul... You've disobeyed me. You can't be king anymore. And so at this point, Samuel is the prophet that goes to, to, to find another king. And so God's going ahead and telling Samuel, We're going to, I'm going to select another king. And here's where I am. I'm in 1 Samuel, which is a book of history, and I'm in chapter 16. Now, whenever... <clears throat> God told that to, to Samuel that Saul wasn't going to be king anymore. It wasn't like the next day. It happened many, many years later. But Saul, Samuel already knew that God was not going to, to use Saul anymore. Saul was not going to, had, had already lost favor with God. And it broke his heart because he was the one that helped choose Saul. So in chapter 16 of 1 Samuel, God tells Samuel, how long are you going to be sad because Saul disobeyed me? He says, I have rejected him as the king. And then he says, you get ready. We're going to go select another king. And I, I'm going to paraphrase this, but I'm going through verse 13. And so Samuel goes to the house of Jesse, which is what God tells him to do. And Jesse puts up all of his sons there. And every one of them are strong, smart, handsome, anything anybody could want in a king. And one by one, God says, no, this is not the one. This is not the one. And, and at one point, um, Samuel says, this is, isn't he the one? Because he's, he's so strong and, and handsome and he's smart. And, then, and this is verse um, 7, verse 7 of this verse says, God says to Samuel, don't look at his appearance or how tall he is because I have rejected him. He says, humans do not see what the Lord sees. For humans see what is visible, but God looks at the heart. Now you can pretty much guess what happens. All of these sons were rejected and finally Samuel says, is this all the, are these all the sons you have? And he says, no, my son David is out tending to our sheep. Of course, they wait and send for David, and here he comes. 
scraggly, probably filthy, uh, smelling like sheep. And God says, this is the man. And as we study on, David wasn't perfect. But God called him the man after his own heart. You know, um, we should be people after God's heart, too. Um, I, as, as we close and, and talk about our leaders, you know, I, I don't know if you all understand, you know, what a president does or what leaders, even in our churches, in our homes, wherever we have somebody that's over us, they have a heavy job. It's important to lead the people in a way that's going to honor God and in a way to choose right from wrong. As you grow up, you know, perhaps a future president is watching this video right now. And it would be my prayer that you, whoever you are, would choose to be a president or a, a leader that would seek after God's heart. If we stay close enough to God, wherever we are, He will show us the right way to lead. I kind of, there was something else I wanted to mention on this. Um, it says at the end of one of these little articles I had printed out, um, the one of the things I had seen I really liked is uh, talking about David's thing. He says, God does not look at what people look at. God looks at the heart and judges faith and character. And the, the, the last is, is, as we have enjoyed our President's Day and our time off, Let's take time to thank God for the godly leaders that we've had who have, who have led us all through the years until now. Leaders that we have in our state, in our county, in your home, at your school, at our church. Thank, let's thank God for the godly ones that we've had and ask Him to bless those that may not know who He is that he may show them himself to them. Now, I pray that you all have a great rest of the week and stay warm. I hope that um, this Sunday I can see you all in church. And let's have a little prayer. Dear Lord, I just thank you for the great leadership you have put in our lives, Lord, and things, the people that we have, uh, have had to, um, to recognize as our leaders in times past. Lord, and I know that there are some of them that we might not like as much as we do others, but Lord, we know that you are in control of all things and you're in control of all people and that, Lord, you have a plan. Lord, and I just pray that as we uh, go through as, as citizens of our country and as citizens of your kingdom, Lord, that we would live uh, in a way that we would honor and glorify you and that we would um, show the world that we are, are proud to, to be uh, Americans and we're proud to be Christians, Lord. But more than anything, we just pray that, that as people look at us, that they would see the love of Jesus in our lives. Lord, we just love you so much and thank you for the great mercies you give us. Amen.